Hey folks, Josh here of Rugged Ridge Forest. We recently put up a Perka hybrid steel truss and wood girt and purlin building. This is the site of our Perka building and we made our own concrete forms out of 5 8 inch CDX and we put a um, rebar, 3 8 inch rebar cage in there. You can see that screw in the corner. Those were set with a laser transit. So that's the level of the finished concrete. So when we go to pour it in, it was very easy for us to keep them all in a level plane. And that makes it easier when you're setting them because you don't have to be so precise. Uh, you set the screw to the same level as your lowest pier and then just filter the screw. It took 10 piers and we found that the CDX and concrete assembly was cheaper than buying like a, a lamppost precast or a, a smaller pier based on what we were doing. Another thing that I like to do is the batter board layout. And not everybody might have seen this before, but basically these batter boards are these uh, grade stakes pounded into the ground. But it's important that you put them outside of your working area, uh, you know, 10 or 12 feet so you can get your equipment around there. You then connect them with a horizontal grade stake and using your laser transit, um, if you can get all of those level, maybe about four inches above your finished grade, then you can use a, a carpenter's speed square to just make sure that all of your corners are lined up. And what's nice about that is you just move a screw and you can square your building and you can drop the lines and get them right out of the way when it comes time to work. So while we're setting them, we would, you know, mark it out, put a little spray paint down, dig a hole, drop our line, dig a hole where the spray paint was, and then put the uh, pier form in there and then wiggle it around based on our string until we were in perfection. That way this um, batter boards stay in place, they don't get knocked, everything is level, and it makes for a really nice uh, assembly process and finished product. That's how we like to roll. Here you can see Joseph using his uh, skid steer to unload the uh, Perka trusses. They came on this 18-wheeler truck, and I uh, sped up the video a little bit, but it was very easy for us to unload. They came banded together, about five trusses in a bundle. They were as about as much as one man could lift from the middle, two men, one on each end, and you could move them. Here you can see our method of lifting the posts or the wall legs. And we used an HR18 mini excavator, Terex, um, a pretty small machine, about 11,000 pounds, and we lifted with a chain pretty high up on that little webbed leg. And then we set it onto two pieces of threaded rod embedded in the concrete. Those two little bits of threaded rod, once bolted down, held the uh, post vertical enough for us to begin working. But the more pieces you could tie together, the better. Here we are installing the girts. Uh, and we just did a quick row of them just to kind of hold it in relative spacing. You want to do a good job of measuring that. And then once your girts were up, then you can use these cross ties uh, or braces uh, in order to level one whole side uh, in one axis. And those were held on with a little angle iron with a hole on it and then a clip on the um, leg or post. And uh, the angle iron sat up against the leg, the threaded rod goes through and then you tension it down. Here we had our trusses for the roof system. And I was a little bit disappointed because you, you can see a clip right there. Um, the clips were not in the position to sit flush when all of the open sides were lined up. And so you have a little mismatching of sides uh, like that. It's definitely not structural, but it was a little aesthetic peeve that um, we had tried to work around a couple of times and we just couldn't quite figure out. I, I don't believe there was a way where we could have gotten them all to line up and the clips that the braces go through to sit flush. But um, it really didn't take much to hold it up over the weekend. We just threw some 200 pounds yellow rope, the kind you use to pull electrical wire through conduit up. And we figured that was better than nothing to kind of triangulate the assembly. But I wouldn't go climbing all over it, but it held up. And then we called in a crane. You know, we were lazy. We wanted it done fast. And the crane was here for two hours. I think they spent two hours driving out to us. So we got billed for four hours, but it really made it pretty easy. And they recommend uh, putting in the cross bracing as you install. But we just kind of bammed and jammed, assembled them in a line, put enough uh, purlins in to hold it together, and then uh, sent them on their way, and then cross-braced it later. Once we had all the purlins up, then we threw on the fascia board, and then we also threw in some blocking down the middle of the span. You know, it's 12 foot between those two by tens, between the supports on the two by tens. And so we figured that would kind of keep them from kind of wiggling under load and uh, kind of rigidify the whole structure. 
Then we put on a 24 foot roofing tin. Uh, the ridge cap, we had to come back for another day. I forgot to pick that up on the way. And um, then we also put on the siding. Uh, I used a gray siding because I didn't want it to reflect as much as Galvalume does. But in the end, I was a little bit disappointed. I would have just gone Galvalume all around. Um, this building is 40 feet by 48 is the nominal size um, outside of wood to outside of wood. Uh, we also put three foot drip edges on the outside. I think that just buys you a little bit of space and it keeps the snow from doming up on the building. Uh, there's also three foot, or it might even have wound up being, I think we used 16 footers when we should have used 12s. So we wound up getting four foot of cantilever out the gable ends. We used a pallet uh, on the skid steer in order to set that um, tin. And we had to cut out, you know, little bird's beaks or excuse me, not bird's beak, but a little square cut out uh, around the corners to get it up there. But um, it wound up coming up pretty good. And we did it in about, you know, two weeks and change. Um, and, you know, we had some downtime here and there and we kind of spread it out. But I think that a, a good crew who knew what they were doing could jam a building like this up in two weeks from concrete and up. Um, if everything is in order, the building really does fly up. And there is a little bit of head scratching on the woodwork as there always is, you know, how do they want us to do it versus how are we used to doing things? But it, it was nothing that uh, would hold up uh, two men and a boy or, you know, two folks and a child from uh, getting it all done in one fell swoop. Hey folks, I hope you enjoyed our overview of uh, setting up and installing a Perka building. So far, we've been really happy with it. Uh, it seems stout and uh, creates a great space. We went 40 by 48 by 16, and that's just 290 bales. We got another three or 400 coming in. But uh, if you uh, like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel and head on over to ruggedridgeforest.com to get yourself some wood-fired, organic, pure Vermont maple syrup. We really appreciate your support, and we know that you're really going to enjoy our syrup. So. Uh, again, Perka buildings have uh, been great to go up and great to work with. And um, if you want to support our efforts, head on over to RuggedRidgeForest.com. Thank you all and have a great day.